Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's announcement. Uh, we're in the beautiful riding of uh, Toronto Center. Uh, I'm Han Da. I'm the member of provincial parliament for Trinity Spadina. I'm very excited about today's announcement. Uh, I've heard uh, too often from my constituents, uh, many living in social housing, uh, talk about their uh, the state of repair of their, their uh, property. Uh, and I think uh, today's announcement is going to go a long way to help them. So without further ado, I would like to invite the Honorable Peter Milchin, the Minister for Poverty Reduction and Housing, uh, to the podium. And before we do that, I, I forgot to uh, uh, acknowledge a few uh, special guests. And we have my good friend uh, Anna Balau, Councillor for Davenport, as well as uh, His Excellency uh, Mayor John Tory, and a very hardworking, hardworking Mayor for Toronto, a very good negotiator, uh, and a true champion for Toronto. So, without further ado, Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Han, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Your Excellency, <laughs> Mayor Tory, and uh, your Highness, uh, Councillor Bailao. Uh, it is indeed uh, a great pleasure to be uh, here with you this morning uh, in this wonderful uh, housing development that's uh, been around for many years, providing uh, great uh, homes uh, for residents. Uh, this is what social housing should be like. It should be well-funded, comfortable, and sustainable for those who live in it. And despite the incredible view um, uh, here on this uh, beautiful rooftop, uh, this isn't exactly what we think of uh, when we talk about social housing today. Uh, we see the coverage in the news, the aging buildings, people struggling to make ends meet, and politicians arguing about who has done more or less to make life easier for people who call these places home. But coming from my background in architecture and as a former executive director of a nonprofit housing corporation, a former municipal councillor, and now the Minister of Housing, uh, I know very well all sides of those arguments. And while it makes uh, for interesting coverage on the nightly news, those arguments are irrelevant. And that's because what it leaves out is what's most important. The people who call social housing home and what we can do to support the neighborhoods they have proudly made their own. And to keep people at the core of the decisions we make as governments, we have to think in the long term. We have to invest in the long term. And we have to work together over the long term to deliver for the people of Ontario. And that's why we're here today. I'm very pleased to announce that our government is making a five-year investment into repairs and retrofits for social housing buildings across Ontario, totaling up to, contingent on carbon market proceeds, $657 million. And I'm also very pleased to announce that Toronto's share of this funding, directed to Toronto community housing and contingent on carbon market proceeds, will total up to $343 million over five years. And we'll be sharing more information about what this funding means to communities across the province in the weeks ahead. I want to take a few moments to tell you what it means here in Toronto. And as we stand uh, here, uh, the first repairs and retrofits made possible by this funding are already underway in social housing buildings across the city and in Toronto community housing. In 2016-17, we made an investment of $43 million to help address the repair backlog in social housing across the city while working to modernize and continue the lifespan of those buildings for the years to come. In building on that initial investment, Ontario is committing four more years of dedicated funding for social housing repairs and retrofits funded through proceeds from Ontario's carbon market. And this will give the city and specifically Toronto Community Housing, the ability to plan and carry out crucial upgrades to social housing infrastructure. These investments will help keep social housing units open across the city and give them the modernizing, energy-efficient features that will keep costs down and allow residents to call them home for many years to come. This is about helping to make our social housing more sustainable in the long term. And Toronto social housing residents, including those who live in Toronto community housing, will benefit through new energy efficient heating, 
lighting retrofits, window replacements, high efficiency building envelopes, and improved insulation. And I appreciate these uh, improvements don't make compelling photos or TV clips, but they're crucial to ensuring the safety and comfort of residents and the long-term viability of our social housing infrastructure. And by tackling these uh, core social housing needs, like the very expensive heating, lighting, and building exterior repairs and retrofits, our five-year investment has a multiplier effect. It ensures the investments made by Toronto City Council and Toronto Community Housing stretch that much further. Toronto Community Housing as a social housing provider has done some incredibly hard but important work of looking inward to make every dollar count. And through this effort, TCHC has self-generated approximately $700 million from their own assets toward the long-term sustainability of its social housing units. This work and uh, the appointment of the new CEO, President uh, Kathy Milsom, uh, will be important factors as the city lays out its vision for sustainable and modern Toronto community housing to better serve its residents. The City Council, and I know Councillor uh, Bailao, has shown tremendous leadership in tackling the challenge of aging social housing units across Toronto. Through the flexible model of funding provided by the province, City Council prioritized approximately half of our initial $43 million commitment for repairs and retrofits toward TCHC buildings. And Mayor Tory, uh, who is uh, a very dogged advocate on these issues and uh, has led Toronto City Council in prioritizing uh, some of the units uh, most in need of repair by making important capital contributions of over $200 million to TCHC. These commitments, along with the $343 million from the province, will go a long way to addressing the needs of social housing residents now and for the years to come. Today's announcement and priorities we have set as a government demonstrate our commitment to building a fair society where everyone benefits. Whether we're talking about the single parent trying to make ends meet and keep a roof over their head, the young renter who wants to be able to save a little bit of money as well as pay the rent, the middle income family who have just bought their first home, or the senior citizen downsizing and looking for affordable, decent housing. Every Ontarian deserves a fair shot at a life and a secure home in the community they love. And working together, we will make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Now I would like to invite the Mayor to the podium to give his remarks. Well, Han and the Minister and my colleague, of course, uh, Councillor Anna Bailo, who's been a tireless advocate uh, on the housing file uh, before uh, my arrival as Mayor and during the time that I've had a chance to be here. And I'm very pleased to be here with all of them uh, this morning. And I will begin by saying that uh, this Housing Minister is off to a great start. Um, what we're hearing today is good news for Toronto. This is good news uh, for Toronto. I believe this announcement uh, represents a strong indication that this Premier, the, the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne, this Minister, uh, Peter Milchin, and this Ontario government have stepped forward on housing, especially as it regards the most vulnerable residents uh, of Toronto community housing. This is money that the city did not have before to put towards housing and specifically towards the repair and upgrading of Toronto community housing. Specifically, uh, these new funds will help us to upgrade the living conditions, the comfort and the well-being of the residents uh, in social housing and will also make a difference uh, to some of our environmental objectives uh, which we've set out quite recently through the Transform TO problem. But fundamentally, it is about uh, a basic standard of living for some of our most vulnerable citizens. And that's what it's been, been about since the beginning of the discussions we've been having, which actually go back even before my time. Living in a properly repaired home, having a safe place to raise your family, feeling safe in your community, feeling that your governments, plural, are showing you respect uh, as a fellow citizen. Over the years, many different governments at all levels have let our social housing buildings end up in an unacceptable state. Unacceptable for our fellow citizens who live there and unacceptable when it comes to the simple matter of common sense and the maintenance of public assets. The provincial government, our federal partners, City Hall and the development and nonprofit sectors, we now have a significant foundation working together 
to address this challenge and to tackle this challenge together. In the short term, with respect to these hundreds of millions of new dollars, the key thing for the province is to make sure that the City of Toronto, and in particular Toronto Community Housing, have as much flexibility as possible with this money in order to both make our buildings more livable and to make sure that they are sustainable for the future. And my discussions with the Minister, my initial discussions just in the last day or so about this are very encouraging in this important respect in terms of the flexibility that we will have uh, within the context of uh, energy retrofits and other things related to making these buildings better. I look forward uh, to continuing to work with this Minister and with uh, my MPP and the Parliamentary Secretary uh, for Poverty Reduction with committed MPPs like him and others uh, and with the province generally to repair our Tr Toronto community housing stock and to make life better for the tenants. I believe that if we all work together, as today's announcement indicates that we can and that we will, that in concert with the upcoming national housing strategy, we can make a real difference in the lives of tens of thousands of Torontonians who have unique housing needs. This is about fairness. This is about fairness for those who are struggling, or those who are disabled, or those who are seniors operating on very low incomes. Today, we are together acknowledging it is about our fellow citizens and not about us as politicians or as governments, or about technicalities or about arguments about jurisdiction. It is about the people that we serve who live in this housing that needs to be fixed. Today is about governments working together to help people and while there is much more to be done and much more progress to be made, including making sure that the federal government, after its statements in the recent budget, comes forward with a national housing strategy that has them, once again, as true uh, partners at the table on housing with the province and with us, uh, that while there is much more work to be done, this is a very positive step forward for the City of Toronto and in particular for Toronto Community Housing and its many uh, residents uh, who live in its buildings. And so I say thank you uh, to the Minister, to the Parliamentary Assistant, uh, to the Premier and to the Government for this very positive step uh, today in the right direction. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Minister, for this wonderful announcement. Uh, on behalf of residents on Richmond, on Sullivan Street, on uh, you name it, on Phoebe Street, I want to thank you. And I think this is going to uh, make their day and uh, something to look forward to in the next little while. Uh, now we're open for questions. Mayor, Minister? I know that uh, this is a significant step forward, but as far as the total money needed that you've been asking for, how far away are we from that actual goal? Well, I think if you add it all up in terms of responsibility that rests with all three governments, we're still some distance from being able to say we've got the entire uh, problem uh, addressed. But if you uh, look at the monies that are being allocated to Toronto Community Housing today, we're talking about $300 million plus dollars. And so that is a very significant uh, contribution, a very big step forward in the interest of fairness for the tenants of Toronto Community Housing, and it will allow us to continue with a lot of the repair work that we have been doing. Uh, we have some monies that have been indicated that are forthcoming from the federal government, and that is they're, they're to start, I think, not until next year at the earliest, but we're going to continue to press within the context of the National Housing Strategy, working with Ontario uh, to make sure that those two materialize not only in significant dollar terms, but also with the flexibility we need to be able to apply those to our different housing priorities, including uh, these repairs. But I can only say that when you're talking $300 million, um, that is a very significant amount of money, and I acknowledge that, and I'm grateful for that, and more more so than whether I'm grateful, I believe the tenants of Toronto Community Housing will be grateful for this step forward uh, taken today by the Government of Ontario. When you say it's contingent on carbon uh, market proceeds, what exactly does that mean? So the, the source of these funds, uh, in accordance with our, uh, with our budget and our stated uh, plan, is from the proceeds from the carbon market. The proceeds from that uh, have to be directed to projects that reduce greenhouse gases and emissions. And uh, certainly Toronto Community Housing and, and social housing across the province, uh, as you're looking at aging buildings, insulating those buildings, uh, replacing windows, replacing aging uh, boilers and heating infrastructure. Those are all repairs that have to be done now, but those are also repairs that are going to reduce their uh, carbon footprint and actually reduce their operating costs in the long run as well as making the homes more comfortable for the residents. So uh, the proceeds from that market uh, flow through and uh, this portion of it we're spending on social housing, retrofits and repairs, 
And uh, as the market uh, continues to grow, uh, we hope to have more funds. But uh, we, we can only spend what we know we have uh, to date. And uh, that's uh, what we're committed to. This year, I can tell you, uh, the City of Toronto alone will be receiving $120 million from this fund uh, towards their TC TCHC uh, repairs and retrofits. What happens if you don't meet the target that you expect to get when it comes to the car? To, to date, uh, the auctions have been going very well. We expect that to, to continue as more jurisdictions uh, align themselves uh, with this as we see some of uh, uh, the changes uh, in approach that different governments uh, are taking. So I'm uh, very confident that we'll continue to have the funds uh, available through this mechanism to be able to reinvest in communities across Ontario. But if it didn't hit the target, though, that's what I'm asking. Like, what, what would happen? We know the money we have... Uh, this year, which will be flowing uh, through to communities across the province, and we're very confident uh, in our uh, targeting and our budgeting uh, over the coming years. It's conservative, uh, and uh, so we're very confident that we'll be able to deliver on the promise to Ontarians. Mayor Tour, you called for the province to come forward to be an equal partner with the feds. This is obviously significant money, but it's also tied to retrofits. You talked about flexibility. Is this the province? becoming the full partner that you asked them to be? I think it is a huge step forward in that direction and I think that uh, my discussions with the Minister about, and he just made some remarks himself about what uh, flexibility uh, or, or what the definition of energy retrofits can be. Uh, and this is not, you know, stretching uh, a point at all. It is simply to say that whether you're putting on a new roof, whether you're putting on uh, new windows, whether you're putting on new doors, whether you're changing the boiler system, changing the lighting and the wiring uh, to be more energy efficient, not only will make a significant contribution to the upgrading of these buildings, uh, but will save us money in the long term. Every time you energy retrofit a building, there's going to be huge operating savings for us going forward. And so I believe that uh, the combination of their participation in this end of it with quite a bit of flexibility uh, and the federal government's participation and our continued participation uh, will allow us to address all the different kinds of repairs, including the doors and windows and roofs and lights and boilers uh, that are energy retrofitting, but also including other things uh, that can be uh, dealt with by the funds coming from other governments, meaning particularly the City of Toronto and the federal government. So I think this is a significant step forward. As I said, there is much more work to be done. Uh, the national housing strategy is yet uh, to have been put in front of us in a final form and the f funding that will go with that. Uh, there are you know, questions of supply and affordable supply. I think the minister and I are likely to have more to say about that as the fall goes on in terms of some other very positive steps taken in their budget to make land available uh, for affordable housing. This is a big file on which governments were heading in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, a year ago, two years ago. Now I think we're all headed in the right direction, which is to actually work together to do something about this, to improve living conditions for the tenants of TCHC, but also to take very positive steps to increase the supply of affordable housing uh, in addition to improving the stock of social housing. One, one of the things that, uh, <coughs> that, that, that you have raised repeatedly uh, about, uh, about the housing file is the fact that Toronto's going to have to close some, some units uh, in, in the next few years without adequate funding. Do you have any sense as to what this funding will do to that list? I think you know my objective, my stated objective has been all the way through that while there were projections based on the state of disrepair of some of those units that we would have to close some going forward, um, it has been my determination to avoid doing that, uh, you know, with, with every ounce of determination that I have. Uh, this will help us a lot, I think. Um, you know, again, some of those buildings don't necessarily need energy retrofits, but we can apply the money to energy retrofits where they are needed, where we might have had to replace a boiler without any help from the province and then take the money we would have had to apply uh, to that energy uh, retrofit uh, boiler to fix up a building and stop it from closing. So my objective remains the same. I do not find it an acceptable outcome in this city of Toronto at this point in our history with the number of people who are looking for housing and living in substandard conditions to be closing uh, units, other than those like Firgrove, where it was a very particular example where we'd actually committed the money to fix them up and then uh, when the professionals went and looked at the buildings, they said, you know, you're better off not to try and fix these because they're not fixable because they were poorly built uh, in the first instance. So there will be some exceptions, but I hope they will be very limited and not caused by any decisions that have to do with lack of money, but rather if there are any units to be closed, uh, it'll only be because we've reached the end of the line with those units and they can't be repaired. Um, but I hope even that number can be, you know, kept to zero or to a, to a very tiny number. 
you make sure, in terms of oversight, you get the most bang for the buck when it comes to repairs and minimizing disruptions for tenants? Well, the minimizing of disruptions is obviously something that we have to focus on a great deal, and I know there have been even construction projects that are ongoing right now that you know, seem to take longer than they should. And I will tell you, this is going to be a very keen focus of mine, not confined to housing in the next 12 months, and I've already indicated it with regard to parks. Um, I believe that we have allowed our procurement process in a number of respects to become incredibly inefficient. We have allowed an obsession with taking the lowest bid to sometimes produce a result in which you get the lowest bid, yes, but you get shoddy workmanship or you get inadequate resources being brought to the job so it takes too long. And so I'm going to be looking at ways in which we can um, regain public confidence on this, including with these housing expenditures, uh, so that the public will know that we're getting the maximum amount done for the money we have, and that it's being done in a quality fashion as quickly as possible and with as limited disruption as possible. And that applies not only to housing, but I'm also starting in, as I have done already, I've had a couple of meetings already about parks where we've seen some examples where um, I just don't think people take sharp pencils and a sharp determination uh, to the job of getting things done for the least amount of money as efficiently and safely as possible. Victoria, or Councillor Bio, in April, Toronto Community Housing said it was going to have to close 400 badly needed homes because of lack of repair money. Is this announcement today going to reduce that number, which may be greater, you can correct me, at all? I don't get a sense I of will just say from the top line, first of all, we found out about the details of this announcement yesterday, so now we have to sort of take the numbers and run them through uh, all of the requirements we have for repairs to be done in the next couple of years, which led to that a total and I, I told you earlier and I would repeat this my determination is that we end up with with as close to zero units closed as possible and that any that do have to be closed are only closed because they're not in a state where they can be repaired as opposed to that we don't have the money to repair them I just can't be comfortable at all with the notion of closing units down at a time when there's a drastic shortage of both social housing and affordable housing generally. And so I think it's premature to be able to say for sure, absolutely, those 400 that were talked about, uh, you know, fit within the category of being able to say they won't now be closed, but that's the objective is to get to that number to zero or as close to zero as possible with the only ones being above zero being ones that just can't be repaired and that it's not practical to repair them. Do you want to add to that, Councillor? I'll just add that uh, Toronto City Council, at the, when Tenants First was approved, passed a motion not to close any units. This is actually the work that has been done. The conversation with the province uh, had started. This is the culmination of that. There is work that is going through the budget process as well. And our goal, and I think everybody's goal, is to not have units closed and to move together to get the problem fixed. Uh, this is a good beginning. Uh, it's not the end of the conversation. It's the beginning of the conversation. Where do you come down on the uh, debate over the school resource officer program? I come down in, on saying that the responsible way to go about making an important public policy decision like this is to have a proper review of this. I was one of the first people after the consultations we did on anti-black racism to indicate that I had heard concerns expressed by parents and others about this program and exactly how it was playing itself out in some schools on some days and that therefore a review was, was quite appropriate uh, after 10 years of the program being in place. I do not believe it is responsible, a uh, responsible way to make decisions to just decide we should close the program based on the say-so of people who come uh, to the Police Services Board and say that's their view. I believe what the Police Services Board is poised to do today uh, is the proper thing to do, which is a thoughtful uh, review done by an outside organization, in this case through Ryerson, uh, which has a fulsome program of consultation included in it uh, with members of the community of all different descriptions with the objective being that we enhance community policing, that we enhance uh, the relationship between the community and particular young people and the police. And if there are flaws in this program, which I acknowledge there probably are, then I trust that this study uh, will identify those and we will be able to make the changes to the program as appropriate. But I support the program and I do not support uh, people who show up at the Police Services Board and say that uh, because they have concluded this program has flaws, which I acknowledge it may well, that therefore we should just close it and give up on it. I don't think that's the right answer. I think the right answer is to study it carefully and then reach a determination based on the results of that study. Where do you stand on these new police cruisers? Councillor Shelley Carroll says the board still has not been consulted about this and she go back to the drawing board. What do you think? I think that uh, we did prove in one respect that the process worked and that there was extensive public consultation undertaken. Thousands of people participated online. Uh, the chief in bringing out the new car earlier in the week uh, took uh, that advice for, uh, in terms of what the public said, which is a greater predominance of white, for example, on the cars uh, as they now exist. 
I think it might have been preferable uh, for the report to have been considered by the board today and have the car wheeled out after that, but I do uh, know that the members of the board were generally informed as to the results of the consultation undertaken uh, and that the chief uh, then made a decision in that regard. So I think the good news is that there was uh, a reconsideration of a decision that had been taken earlier with the gray cars and that there have been changes made and that those changes are responsive to some of the concerns expressed by the public. As for the transformational tax task force and the hiring freeze, where are we now in terms of that conversation? Well, the hiring freeze uh, was, was on and was always something that was going to be subject to review on an ongoing basis. And what we realized uh, is that the number of people leaving the police service, in particular just to retire, was in excess of what our projections had been. And so we indicated on a one-time basis that there would be a very modest number of people that could be hired uh, in the forthcoming year in order to make sure that we could keep the city safe and the police could do the job they have to do and which they do very well while we were in the process of modernizing the police service. And so um, by and large, uh, we're going to be heading on a continued uh, trajectory to see the number of police officers reduced on a gradual uh, basis, but as there are adjustments needed to make sure we keep this the safest city as it was adjudged in the last few days in Canada, and I believe the safest city in North America, we will do what we have to do to make sure the city can be well policed while at the same time modernizing and meeting our budget objectives. None of those will be in peril as a result of these decisions that you make along the way as numbers, for example, of those retiring exceed uh, what had been projected. A couple more questions if there are any. Just it sounded for a while like uh yourself and Mr. Milton were uh, pretty long ways apart when it came to uh, funding for social housing, at least in, in the comments that were, were put in the news. So I guess I would ask you guys then, uh, are you guys cool now? Like <laughs> I will just say that I've said all along as regards the Premier, and I certainly can say this with respect to Mr. Milchin, who is a former city councillor and a friend. And I met with him, I think, 24 hours after he was appointed as Minister of Housing, and I was delighted he was appointed because I knew, as an architect, as a past executive in nonprofit housing, and as a city councillor, a past city councillor, and as an MPP, he had a keen interest and a big heart uh, when it came to the fate of people who live in Toronto Community Housing, and that it very much formed, as I said all along, that I knew it did in the context of the Premier's views, a part of a fairness agenda that this government is talking about. And so I could tell from the first time we met, 24 hours after he was appointed, I think it was about 24 hours later, that we were going to be able to have uh, more positive discussions with more positive uh, results for the tenants of Toronto Community Housing. And that as long as I was prepared to put aside and Councillor Bailau, and as long as others were prepared to put aside questions of jurisdiction and technicalities and politics for that matter, and just focus on the needs of these tenants in Toronto Community Housing, that we could achieve more than we had achieved before. And I think today is not the ultimate and overall answer, but I think it is a huge step forward um, to having us operate in a partnership. And that's what the, the taxpayers and the citizens and the tenants want. They simply want us to sort of get together, decide who can do what, and to get on with the job of making these repairs. And that's exactly what we're now going to do with substantial new support from the Government of Ontario, support to come from the Government of Canada, and continued support from the City of Toronto. Yes, yeah, so I'll just... Uh and uh, the mayor and I are, are friends. Uh, I've supported him in all of his municipal campaigns. Right. Just want to be clear about that. Um, uh, but the, the discussions between our government and the city of Toronto had been ongoing uh, for years and many months. And uh, today's announcement is the culmination of that first round of discussions. Uh, it is not the end of our a uh, common goal to improve uh, social housing and build upon affordable housing in the city and this province. Uh, a lot of my work in the coming weeks and months will be working with uh, my provincial and territorial counterparts and the federal government to make sure that the national housing strategy is delivered, to make sure that Ontario gets its fair share from that, and that it's structured in a way that allows communities to make the right decisions uh, for the housing that they have uh, to deal with. So we're, we've constantly been working together, and certainly I, as minister, uh, hit the ground running, had great conversations with the mayor, with Councillor Bailao, and uh, we will get the job done. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank